Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the December 2013 commencement exercises of Hofstra University. Our ceremony begins with the invocation delivered by Mayor Middleman from the University's Board of Chaplains, followed by the national anthem and the first stanza of our alma mater, led by Melody Hall, class of 2013. Will everyone please rise? Almighty God, we stand before you today to honor Hofstra University's graduating seniors of December 2013. May these students understand that the knowledge they've gained during their college years must be transformed into action that will enhance the well-being and human dignity of all people. Let us be inspired by the words of George Bernard Shaw, so often paraphrased by Robert F. Kennedy. Some people see things as they are and ask why. I dream things that never were and ask why not. Bestow your goodness upon all members of the university community. Bless the parents and families of these students, families whose patience, understanding, sacrifice, and love have brought them to this joyous occasion and grant your special blessing to these graduating seniors as they celebrate this wonderful achievement today and stand on the threshold of a new adventurous journey in life. Grant them the wisdom and vision to choose the right goals, the patience and perseverance to successfully attain them, and the awareness that pursuit of their ideals must always be tempered by integrity and compassion. In this season of celebrating holidays of light, May we always be the source of warmth, hope, and light for people whose worlds are dark with life's hardships. And may it be your will, merciful God, that these seniors and all of us gathered here today always bask in the light of your blessings of health, happiness, fulfillment, and peace.
Please be seated. I'm pleased now to make some very special introductions, beginning with the two university trustees present this morning, the chairperson of our board of trustees, Janice Meyer, class, JD class of 81, and trustee and former chair of the board of trustees, Leo A. Goodhart. I'm also pleased to introduce our deans, and I'm asking you to please hold your applause until they've all been introduced. Dean Simon Benevy from the School of Engineering and Applied Science. Dean Ronald Bloom from the School of Health Sciences and Human Services. Dean Sean Finelli from the School of Education. Dean Bernard J. Firestone from the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Dean Warren Frazina from Honors College. Vice Dean Cliff Jernigan from the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication. Dean Eric Lane from the Maurice Dean School of Law. Dean Leora Schmelkin, Dean of Graduate Studies and Senior Vice Provost. Dean Patrick Sochi from the Frank G. Zarb School of Business. Representing our shared governance, the chair of our Senate Executive Committee, Stuart Bass, and the speaker of our faculty, Will Nyrod, representing the more than 120,000 alumni of Hofstra University, the president of our alumni organization, Tanya Levy Odom, class of 90, and the one person on our campus who needs no introduction, the president of Hofstra University, President Stuart Rabinowitz. Members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, administration, distinguished guests, and by far most importantly, the fantastic, stupendous, super cadget, whatever, fabulous class of 2013 of Hofstra University. And of course, their proud families and their proud friends. I, too, welcome you to our mid-year commencement exercises. For me, commencement should not be some kind of regimental ritual, nor, uh, unfortunately, will it be an occasion for me to finally reveal to you, after all those years of tuition, the secret of everlasting happiness. As much as I would like to reveal that secret to you, I have come to believe that the secret is different for each one of us, and we must discover our own path to fulfillment for ourselves. As to giving you advice on other important life issues, well, I'll leave that task to our superbly qualified commencement speakers this afternoon. For me, graduation is very simple. It is, at its core, a celebration. We are here to celebrate the accomplishments and the hard work of the graduates and the sacrifices that have been made on their behalf by family and by friends. And we also celebrate the many exciting future options and opportunity, all that work and all those sacrifices have afforded to the graduates who today will acquire one of the very very rare assets in life which will never ever uh, depreciate in value, their Hofstra degrees. Indeed, we are confident that those degrees will surely increase in value over the careers of our graduates. And we make a solemn promise to you that we will continue to do everything in our power to enhance the stature and the reputation of Hofstra and thus the value of your degrees. By far my most important message to our graduates today is very simple but very heartfelt. You have earned our congratulations and our admiration. You have worked hard, you have learned well, and you are clearly ready to make your mark on the world. We take pride, true Hofstra pride, in your accomplishments, and so should each of you. In short, today is surely a time for you to proudly display your Hofstra swag. Somebody should explain to Senator Schumer what swag means. I don't think he knows. 
Now, I, clo I close my very, very brief remarks today, as I have for the past 12 years as the president of this great university. And that is by wishing every single one of our graduates well. I wish each of you all the success you think you need and all that work and ability earn for you. I wish you the perspective to forgive yourself and learn from your inevitable mistakes, and they are inevitable. I wish you the tenacity and the courage and frankly the good luck, the good fortune, to someday find a life's work about which you feel passionate rather than just settling for one which neither challenges nor fulfills you. I wish you experience the very special sense of satisfaction and self-worth that comes only from using at least some of your talent and energy to help others, especially those who are in need. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, I wish you the wisdom not to forego the love of family and friends in the relentless pursuit of material success. For as comedian, comedian Lily Tomlin so aptly observed, the trouble with the rat race is that even if you win the race, you will still feel like a rat. The class of 2013 leaves here with our admiration and our, our affection. We enjoy teaching you we enjoyed learning from you. We hope that you will maintain your ties to your classmates and that surely you will maintain your ties to your alma mater. From this day forward, you will always be a graduate of Hofstra University and your accomplishments will always be the most important driver of the reputation of the value of a Hofstra education. You will always be an important member of the university community. And here at Hofstra, you will always be welcomed home. On behalf of the faculty, the administration, and the staff, I extend to each of you our heartiest congratulations and our very warmest wishes for your success and your happiness. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce an outstanding public servant and a great friend of Hofstra University's, the senior senator from New York, Senator Charles Schumer. Well, thank you, Provost Berliner. Thank you, President Rabinowitz, you and the whole faculty and staff and administrators, all the way down to the people who come late at night and keep the place clean, have made Hofstra one of the best institutions of higher learning, not just on Long Island and not just in New York, but in America. Congratulations. Job well done. Now first, I'd like to announce my class gift. As most of you know, it's hard to pay for college and graduate school. And if you're poor, the federal government helps you out. That's a good thing. But what about the middle class? So several years ago, I wrote a law that said you or your parents, whoever paid, can take as a full tax credit $2,500 off your federal taxes for each year of college, and there's a similar deduction for graduate school, provided, provided, there's always a provided, your family income is below $200,000 a year. So, for those of you who come from families who make below 200,000, make sure you take that credit or deduction. Last year, about a third of all the people who are entitled didn't do it, but the good news is you can file a form with the IRS and do it for three back years, so you could get back as much as 7,500. Now, what about if you come from a family that makes above $200,000 a year? God bless you. I'd like to say a word to the parents. I know how you feel. It was a few short years ago that my wife Iris and I watched our daughter Jessica come up on stage and take that diploma. And if you're like us, you think back to the tough times. 
We remember when we had to rush Jessica to the hospital. She was just a few months old. She had 106 and a half fever. We didn't think she'd make it, but praise God, she did. We remembered when we put her on the school bus for the first time, and she ran to the back of the bus as it pulled away, tears streaming down her little cheeks, waving goodbye. And when my wife Iris went to pick her up at 2 o'clock, she bounded off the bus, happy as could be. She said, Mommy, I came back. When we talked to her, then we remembered Jessica as a teenager, when she didn't talk to us very much. And we, when she did, we didn't understand a word she said. And then moms, dads, you see your sons and daughters come up on the stage, take the diploma, and become an adult before your very eyes, one of the greatest days, I'm sure, of your life. To the moms and dads, congratulations. Job well done to you, too. Now, to this great class 2013 Hofstra, you know, you're growing up and graduating with two major advantages. First, you graduated from a great school. It gives you a leg up on all those other grads. So when some of you were born, the word internet had never been used. There was no Google and no Facebook and no texting and no cell phones and no LOL. In 1994, there were just 13 websites on the World Wide Web. That's it. Now there are 14 billion. So that shows you how fast technology is changing our world. And you know, your parents, your teachers, me, the older generation, we try to get used to this technology, but it's hard for us. We're learning it as adults. But you, you were born into it. Technology is to your generation as fish is to a water, as fish is to a water as water is to a fish. You've been swimming in it your whole lives. So the fact that you're graduating from a great school like Hofstra, and the fact that you're the first generation to be totally immersed in this technology means the world is your oyster. My advice to the class of 2013 is very simple. Figure out what your dream is. Reach high for it. Then reach deep down inside yourself. See what you're made of. See if you can achieve that dream. My advice to the class of 2013 is very simple. Go for it. Now, sometimes you'll make the wrong choice, but if my experience is any indication, you'll pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and move forward. But if you make the right choice, with a lot of hard work, a little luck, and some prayer, your life will be enriched forever. Now, I learned these lessons myself. When I was seated at graduation from college, as many as of you are today, that was a long time ago, I had just learned that I had won a scholarship to travel all around the world, all expenses paid for an entire year. For me, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. I had never been out of the country before. But at the same time, I had met a girl, and I fell in love. Aww. I had to decide. Do I go around the world on the all-expense-paid scholarship? Yes. Or do I stay home with the girl? No. She said no. Well, I stayed home with the girl. No, no. Don't clap yet. The story continues. She, that summer, she went on a brief vacation. And I went to the airport to meet her on her return. As soon as she got off the plane, I saw by the look on her face something was the matter. She dumped me by Labor Day. There I was, no scholarship, no trip around the world, no girl. I said to myself, what a loser you are. You're never going to make anything of yourself. And in fact, I stayed in my house for several months, and moped around, feeling sorry for myself. But somehow I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and then a few years later, found myself graduating once again, this time from law school. But on the way home from law school, I told mom and dad I was not going to join the fancy law firm like we had planned. I told them my love was politics, and I wanted to run for office. My parents were shocked. My mother was particularly disappointed. You see, they had struggled to help me get through college and law school. The law firm was paying $400 a week, which in those days was more money than my family had ever seen. But my heart wasn't in it. I wanted to follow my dream. 
So that fall, at the age of 23, I ran for the New York State Assembly and I had three opponents. There was the party machine candidate, there was a neighborhood activist, and then there was my mother, who was telling all her friends not to vote for me. So I get this dumb idea of being a politician out of my big, thick head. Well, graduates, a few years earlier, I didn't get that girl, but that November, I won the election. So, to this great class, Hofstra 2013, go for it. And when you have doubts, and believe me, we all have doubts, that's the human condition, that's how God made each and every one of us, maybe you'll remember a few lines from this poem called If. He wrote it, Rudyard, it was written by Rudyard Kipling, and he wrote it 130 years ago to his son, but it's relevant to every son and every daughter of this great class, 2013. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can take one heap of all your winnings and risk it on a turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings but not lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. He wrote it to his son 130 years ago. It's relevant to every son and every daughter of this great class, Hofstra 2013. To the class of 2013, congratulations. Good luck. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. And don't you forget, go for it. Thank you, Senator. We are indeed fortunate to have Senator Schumer as our senior senator. It's now my pleasure to ask that Trustee Leo Goodhart come forward with his candidate for an honorary degree, Philip M. Shalero. This is a really special commencement because it's not often that we have an honored alumnus back to campus to share the day with us. Phil Shalero, Hofstra class of 1978, has spent the better part of the past 30 years in Washington working in top government advisory positions. From 2009 and 10, he served as President Barack Obama's Director of Legislative Affairs. And in 2011, he was special advisor to the president. Just earlier this month, he returned to the White House at President Obama's request to assist with the implementation of the Affordable Air Care Act. After President Obama's 2000 election, 2008 election to office, Mr. Shalero served as his liaison to Congress, playing a critical role in the passage of many laws and reforms including the Affordable Care Act, the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act of 2009, the Economic Stimulus Package, and Wall Street and credit card reforms. Mr. Shalero earned the Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from Hofstra and continued his studies at Lewis and Clark Law School, where he concentrated in environmental law and served as editor-in-chief of the Law Review. After graduating from law school, 
Mr. Shalero spent more than 25 years as Congressman Henry Waxman's Chief of Staff and Staff Director for the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. In 2004, he spent one year in the U.S. Senate as Staff Director for the Senate Leadership Committees and Policy Director for U.S. Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle. Mr. President, for Phil Shalero's career in public service, and record of achievement in government. It is my great honor to present him to you as a candidate for the Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. It was just over a year ago that Hofstra had the privilege of hosting its second presidential debate right here in this complex. The two presidential debates we hosted provided Hofstra students with rare opportunities for insight into our democratic process, and indeed has inspired many of them to become more civically engaged in the issues facing our nation and our local communities. I can think of no better role model for all of them than Phil Shalero, who has dedicated his career and his incredible talents to public service. He has earned a place of high respect and renown in the highest offices of our nation, and who, his work has made a difference in the lives of millions of Americans now and into the future. Phil Shalero, it is my privilege and honor to bestow upon you the degree Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Thank you, uh, President Rabinowitz, for those kind words. And good morning to the faculty, Hofstra trustees, family, friends, and especially the graduates. I especially appreciate this honorary degree. They're always special, but since I am a Hofstra graduate, this is especially meaningful. When I was in your place in 1978, I was just glad to make it to where you are. So today is a recognition beyond anything I imagined. And that's the way life is. It's unpredictable. Three weeks ago, I was happily living in New Mexico, thinking I had left government service behind. The phone rang, and I found myself back in Washington 10 days ago, working with the President on the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. One life lesson I've learned is that when the President of the United States asks you to do something, yes is almost always the right answer. I want to say one other thing about the President, and this is not going to be a political speech, but he said something last year that got a lot of attention, that part of which pertains to today. When he was in Virginia, he said if you were successful, somebody along the way gave you some help. There was a great teacher somewhere in your life. Somebody helped to create this unbelievable American system that we have allowed you to thrive. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. And what was interesting is everybody focused on the last part. You probably remember it from last year. You didn't build that. I think if the president could do it all over again, he would phrase that a little bit differently. That's not what we're going to talk about today. I want to focus on the first part of what he said, and it applies to almost every one of you. If you were successful, and all of you are, you're here today, somebody along the line gave you some help. There may be a couple of you who have done it completely on your own. I can't say that. I didn't. I was very lucky in family and community. I had loving parents and grandparents and siblings. I come from a big, extended Italian-American family that's very close. I grew up in a neighborhood 10 minutes from here where neighbors were more like aunts and uncles than strangers. And I grew up at a time that seemed less dangerous and less complicated than today. I was lucky that when I was in the fifth grade, my teacher, Jerry Schraft, was able to look beyond my grades 
and see some potential that wasn't evident by the C's and D's I was getting. I stayed lucky when I came to Hofstra. Uh, I majored in political science and history and had an all-star crew of professors. One of them is right up here, Bernie Firestone, who's now your dean. He was a young professor then, full of inspiration and optimism and academic brilliance. Another history professor is here today, Mike Diancenzo, who was a great teacher to bring us to the past. My luck continued in law school and in Washington, D.C., and I continually met people who followed a single model. They tried to do their best. They were modest. They never tried to bring attention to themselves. They wanted to do the right thing the right way. When you're around people like that, sometimes a little of it rubs off. There's a person who's here today who didn't go to Hofstra, but he and I became friends when we were both in our first year of college. We went different places. We were 18. We both worked at a supermarket, Pathmark. I was a part-time produce clerk. He was a part-time cashier. I'm going to go back to something that happened then and then talk about today to see the narrative of life. There was one very bad day at the store where there were a group of shoplifters. I didn't know what was going on. I was just arriving at work and the store manager was in the parking lot, shirt tail out, perspired, who told me to go in and block the door and don't let anybody out. I was 18, I followed directions, I went to the door of the supermarket, and I blocked it. <clears throat> as soon as I got there, someone came charging at me. I didn't, still didn't know what was going on because it was chaotic, so I stood my ground. Pete Sobel, my friend, did know what was going on. He knew two other things, too. The person charging at me had a knife, and he had what the law, student, law students here would, would know as malicious intent. I didn't have time to absorb any of it. And in an instant, Pete threw himself in front of me and the shoplifter. <clears throat> I was fine. Pete was left with over 100 stitches a week in the hospital and he saved me from serious injury. Today, Pete continues to do amazing, courageous things. He runs a small business in Inwood, but that's part of his life. The other part of his life is every Thanksgiving, he feeds thousands of people Thanksgiving dinner. At every Christmas, this one being no exception, he'll make sure every kid gets a gift. He organizes it on his own. He has it out of his own pocket. He does it in the community. All year long, he does that. And he never wants, never seeks recognition. There are thousands of people like Pete across the country. They work hard to help other people to accomplish great things. They never want thank you. But since I'm up here today, and he's here today, I'd ask him to stand up so we can all give him a round of applause. There are some other people here who are very special to me, but I'm not going to single them all out. But there is one more that's part of the Hofstra family, and that's Dr. Herb Rosenbaum. Dr. Rosenbaum has had an extraordinary life. He grew up in Germany and in the mid-1930s escaped to the United States with his mother and brother just before the borders were closed and the atrocities began. I think he was about 15 at the time. He joined the Army in World War II, graduated from NYU, and earned his doctorate at Columbia. In 1952, he came to Hofstra, and on his own, he started changing this part of the world. For any of the political science majors here today, he was a driving force in building that department. And for all of you who participate in the Presidential Conference Series, he initiated that. He also became a recognized expert on public opinion and voting behavior. If I remember correctly, his first experience in rigged election came when he was in Germany. There was a local election going on, and he and some of his friends were in the schoolhouse where Nazi officials were counting the votes. What he overheard was not an honest count, 
but Nazis making up the results. And if you have any time today, before you get together with your family and friends, it's worth a minute just to stop by and talk to him. It's a tremendous reservoir of knowledge and experience. He started his life inches from tragedy, but that didn't define him. He's been part of the Hofstra family for 60 years. 1952 today, and I think if I'm right, he's 92, but he's about, he acts about 20 years younger. And for decades, he enriched students. I knew he had an influence on me when I was a student. I didn't realize how much it was until at least 20 years after I left Hofstra. And it kept coming up in different parts of my life. On behalf of all his former students who respect, admire, and love him, we say thank you. And again, I'd ask you, he's here. It's a little difficult for him to stand up, but I ask you to give him a round of applause if he could stand. graduates here today, I ask you to reflect on the people in your life who made a difference. You deserve enormous credit for your accomplishment, but I'm best betting most of you have your own special group of people, family or friends, teachers, who helped you get here. And I'm betting they'll continue to influence your life for years to come. So if you can, whether it's today or before the new year, just take a minute to say thank you to them. It'll mean the world. The second part of what I want to talk about has to do with your future. When we look to the future, sometimes we have to look to the past. I know that sounds counterintuitive. President Harry Truman used to have a favorite expression. The only new thing in the world is the history we don't know. I'll give you an example. One of the most important government and political figures in the last century is almost completely forgotten today. His name was Sam Rayburn. He was in the House of Representatives from 1913, 100 years ago from this year, to 1961. He set a record by serving 17 years as Speaker of the House. During his time in Congress, here's a partial list of the things that changed in America. Women, women won the right to vote. Mass production of automobiles began. World War I was fought, and planes became part of, air, of warfare. Radio and movies were invented. The Roaring Twenties came and went. Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, starting very close to here, and air travel took off. The Great Depression hit, and Social Security was passed. The Holocaust, World War II, nuclear weapons were created and used. Television and computers were invented. The sound barrier was broken. Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, and the civil rights movement followed soon after. DNA was discovered. The Korean War began and ended. And by the time Sam Rayburn got to his final year of Congress, President Kennedy was calling to put a man on the moon. And just think about the breadth of that change in one man's, not life, but one man's career in Congress. And the reason I say that to all of you today is because when you think of your own lives, it's easy to think about today, but fast forward, 1913, today it's 2013. Imagine any of you going into Congress now and serving to the year 2061. The changes I just talked about seem so sweeping and incredible. It's hard to think that we'll have the same changes going forward, but we will. Some will be good, some will be terrible. The challenge for all of you is to lean into that. It's to shape it, whether it's in a big way or a small way, but don't run from it. Sam Rayburn used to have a favorite saying, I've never had time to hate people. I found that the world would meet you halfway if you let it. I think that's sound advice for people in Congress, I think it's sound advice for all the graduates and for everyone else here. One of the things commencement speakers are supposed to do is be brief and also leave you with a piece of advice. My piece of advice for you today is don't be scared. We live in a world that conditions us to be scared. We see that when we go to airports. 
whenever we have to move through metal detectors, whenever we put on the news. Don't be scared. Don't be scared to fail. Don't be scared to put yourself on the line. Don't be scared to have the ball in your hands in the last three minutes. Don't be scared to tell people you care about them. Don't be scared about change, which in the end is always the scariest thing. Don't be scared to stick to your values and moral compass, no matter how much pressure you get. And in the end, don't be scared to stand up for what's right, even if you think you might lose something. You can make small changes, you can make big changes in individual lives the way Pete Sobel does, or you could change the world as Nelson Mandela did. The point is, everything is in front of you. If you have courage, if you have creativity, if you're willing to work hard, you now have the grounding from your education to accomplish whatever you think is most important to your life. Don't let other people tell you otherwise, and don't let the odds convince you that you can't. It's an incredible honor to be here today, and I thank you all. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science in Education, and Bachelor of Engineering degrees please stand? <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present those candidates from the Zarb School of Business the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, the School of Education, the School of Engineering and Applied Science, the School of Health Sciences and Human Services, and the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, who have completed all the requirements for the bachelor's degree. I join with the faculty and the deans of our schools and colleges in recommending that you confer the appropriate degree upon these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me, by the trustees of Hofstra University and the regents of the state of New York, and upon the recommendation of your deans and faculty, I am pleased and proud to confer upon you one of the following degrees as appropriate. Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science in Education, Bachelor of Engineering, or Bachelor of Fine Arts. Congratulations to you all. Will the graduates please step forward to be recognized by President Stuart Rabinowitz and Trustee Chairperson Janice Meyer and the appropriate dean. Your names will be read by Zarb School of Business Associate Dean Joya Bales, Lawrence Herbert School of Communication Associate Dean Mark Oppenheim, and Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Senior Associate Dean Gail Schwab. Graduates of Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Science. Alexis Merlo. Ashley McGee, Asel Al Honeyeda, Jenna Ballard, Gabriel Moss, Melinda Marr, Emma Schmidt, Lena Nash, Ashley Neglia. Shayna Wood, Alexandra Vasso, Vanessa Dominique, Mariam Gulam Mohammed, Sarah Rosenhack, 
Rihanna Cutler, Amanda Hill, Kelly Conway, Victoria Scanlon, Jill, uh, Julie Rodinell, Re Rebecca Desperino, John Zager, Ricardo Oktahidi Percy, Brianna Tech, Nicole Allen, Irene Casamadelis, Paige Meserve, Aaron Calvin, Lauren Van Manen, Brittany Fariella, Tal Brody, Jared Oliveira, Susan Eschelsu, Diana Elizabeth Ayella, Pamela Giambona, Rebecca Ross, Alexis Battelle, Sinead Otazar, Kristen Tringala, Eric Diller, Kieran Cannon, Michael Danielle, Joseph Friedman, Zachary Ellis, Samuel Branch, Sahara Edwards, Eleni Da Silva, Keisha Alexandra Bartholomew, Nicole Alana Ur, Ethan Cookman, Kadir Kadri, Michael Davola, Barry Rafkin, Jessica Lynn, Carolyn Aletto, Elizabeth DeBella, Leslie Santiago, Christy Portlock, Evan Flores, Michelle Lapowitz, Akash Bali, Leon Singh, Sarah Rebolto, graduates of the School of Education, Mitchell Lang, Jacqueline Costin, Samantha Ferrara, Daniel Moulet, Melody Hall, Maxwell Ross, Richard Cheek, Jillian Sobosinski, Merlin Zavala, Leah Bayer, Christy Fuentes, Brianne Fru, Michelle McGinnis, Francis D. Giovanna, Maribeth Caccioli, Jenna Rinaldi, Devin Markey, Richard Schwartz, Jared Rogers, Vincent Bellissimo, Adam Belding, Raina Hodge, Salvatore Pernasiero, Anthony Vitolo, Caitlin DeToro, Stephanie DeFrancesco, Nicole Steiner, Brittany Kerwick, Thomas Ferrick, Jonathan Ng, graduates of the Frank G. Zarb School of Business. Caitlin Burge, 
Keon Smith. Annalisa Kreko. Vinette Rahman. Loretta Grief Barbero. Chloe McDonald. Matthew Henricks. Gabriella McLean. Eunice Montenegro. Lauren Mosca. Joseph Batista. Jeffrey Diaz. Jonathan Perone. Kevin Lake. Lauren Vecchione. Andrew Zeitlin. Douglas Carlton Coben. Valeria Lizano Villacres. Johan Vila. Kelly Fay. Gregory Latini. John Krause. Elizabeth Louch. Charles Torsiello. Sean McLaughlin. Jess Kuyu. Jonathan Elcordy Hubbard. Oguz Kiran. Joseph Farinello. Eric Bradley. Monique Hutton. Eric Daniels. Maria Urena. Stephen Grange. Joseph Stufano. Jonathan Freer. Felicia Jordan. Giacchiano Eno Stallone. Jonathan Herman. Paul Tarantino. Noel McIsaac. Frankie Catanzaro. Michael Galati. Lavanya Dewan. Sana Khan. Yeri Lee. Alicia Johnson. Anthony Carvano. Alexa Brescia. Edgar Humantala. John Makaleski. Samantha Bergman. Kenneth Bustamante. Ayakona Alabi. Robert Rubenfeld. Sebastian DeFay. Catherine Castillo. Ricardo Taylor. Fernando Dioni Fernandez. Pedro Jimenez. Mari Wilson. Sandipa Thapa. Caitlin McCormick. Mark Luciana. Nathan Nathaniel Bobrick. Ferdig Brazada. Kristen Potawarni. Graduates of the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication. Taylor Sokol. Molly Sestak, Christian Kolumbatovich, Mia D'Angelo, Ryan Dunn, Rachel Miller, Alyssa Marie Ferraro, Laurel Kaufman, John Abadi, Amanda Gattaletti, Jack Tarshish, Matthew Orlando, Scott Burgess, Lucas Halpert, Tamon Turner, Samantha Chichester, Jory Heckman, 
Lola Odajabi, Gina Sillo, Joseph Sukuraka, Andrew Wood, Rachel McWilliams, Lindsay Coplotis, Angela Angelica Jackson, graduates of the School of Health Services and Human Sciences, Derek Farber, Blaine Marks, Justin Justine McGranahan, Lindsay Ferguson, Callie Donnelly. Ashley Yugabzeta, Diana Blount, Leonardo Rivera, Danielle Dunn, Emma Golubuski, Ashley Wolfson, Dana Klein, Stephanie Kitsos, Catherine Ordonez. Arbanita Duraku, Alexandria Brown, Sharon Matthew, Aiko Benando, Michelle Catania, Simran Tour, Monet Brown, Christopher Christian Poi, Abigail Florenzwa, Jade Coyle. Judine White, Nicole Roth, Margaret Ward, Courtney Forrester, Megan Lush, Kerry Cummings, graduates of the School of Engineering and Applied Science, Bryant Gossett, Kashup Call, Tabish Siddiqui, Eric Nelson, Preston Perry, Christopher Etienne, Kevin Masuka Saini. Congratulations, graduates. the candidates for Master of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Science in Education, Master of Health Administration, Master of Business Administration, Master of Fine Arts, and Master of Public Health degrees and advanced certificates please stand. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present those candidates from the Zarb School of Business, the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, the School of Education, the School of Engineering and Applied Science, the School of Health Sciences and Human Services, and the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, who have completed all the requirements for the master's degrees and advanced certificates. I join with the faculty and the deans of our schools and colleges in recommending that you confer the appropriate degree upon these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and the regents of the state of New York, and upon the recommendations of your deans and faculty, I am delighted to confer upon you one of the following degrees as appropriate, Master of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Science in Education, Master of Health Administration, Master of Business Administration, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Public Health, or your advanced certificate. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Will the graduates please step forward to be recognized by President Rabinowitz and Trustee Chairperson Meyer and the appropriate dean. Your names will be read by Zarb School of Business Assistant Dean Brian Gallagheri, Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Senior Associate Dean Stephen Costanoble, and Lawrence Herbert School of Communication Associate Dean Mark Oppenheim.
graduates at the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Nirvani Prasad. Stephen Sill. Jocelyn Lukowski. Mahendra Gervais. Maggie Natalie Suarez. Margie. <laughs> Graduates of the School of Education. Renee Resnick. <laughs> William Marinas. Danny Watson. Kelly Moranis. Stephen Bartoloni. Patrick McCauley. Zachary Rifkin, Kevin Anderson, Tracy Ramirez, Elisa Soberman, Michael Reynolds, Gregory Molesky, Dawn Granville Eason, Ernst Jehoshaphat, Christine Creighton. Allison Sifra, Matthew Ryan, Evan Braunschweiger, Linghui Lee, O Wong, Natalie Rachel, Amanda Sheriffs, Alexa Lind, Camille Bergamansky. Pooja Garg, Molly Plenipeel, Nicole Spinelli, Joshua Raganat, David Stern, Anthony Ayers, Marissa Jade DeFrin, Brittany Reese, Lauren Waterman, Jody Wiener, Jason Smith, Heather O'Garo, Arlene Panzerino, Alexandra Benitez, Anne Mari Macaluso, Caitlin Jensen, Lori Fer Sh Shalafani Ferrante. Erin Lagazzaro, Carly Fryman, Ariella Haskell, Rachel Pollock, Lauren Volini, Elizabeth Carollo, Dana Voss, Anna Palumbo, David Tobin. Amanda Haiti, Ashley Andre, Sumitra Little, Juanita Chung, Javita Pettis, Melissa Mayo, Stephanie Futcher, Lisa Zimmerman, Kara Riley, Maria Katsanos, Diana Munoz, Heidi Neumeyer, Navneet Kaur, 
Rocio Rolon, Bernadette Patterson, Diana Bellillo, Tony Lee Mina, Morgan Fitzgerald, Amy Wright, Allison Rossetti, Donna Haynes, graduates of the Frank G. Zarb School of Business, Jiayi Li, Yongyi Chen, Yan Lu, Yipeng Man, Zheng Li, Cheng Cheng Zhu, Yiding Sun, Yulong Wang, Ying Luo, Qianyi Yang, Zhang Long Li, Wang Sun, Jibin Yang, Quan Wang, Mehmet Ali Usta, David Hopner, Stephen Clark, Jesse Laserson, Stephen Kohler, Matthew Rubenfeld, Annette Rodriguez, Tara McDonald, Lily Chung, Melissa Stuttgratz, Stephanie Yanetta, Paul Ingracia, Jean Rachel DeLeon, Vivek Singh, Zhu Yang Ju, Su Xing Ju, Wen Tao Shi, Xiao Tang, Shan Peng Gong, Xu Zhang, Di Zhao, Jing Zi Sun, Lu Qing Chu, Shuang Shuang Dai, Su Shen Lu, Feng Yi Tian, Qing Yi, Xiao Yu Tian, Xiao Chen Chu, Qiang Huang, Zhu Cheng, Kamal Lao, Plato Apergis, Yun Zhang Gu, Chuan Lu, Shuai Yuan, Daniel Boland, Jia Lu, Heng Xiao Li, Hang Hang, Adam Sigliano, Frederick Karami, Lisa Badri, Rebecca Miller, Sija Zhang, Marion Lamonaco, Merlane Vo, Ezekiel Arrington, Thomas Weber, Kevin Dooley, Joshua Sherman, Robert Schwinn, Eric Peckerman, Nithin Iliparambil, Jonathan Monet, Peter Magistrali, Gianni Mashi, Kimberly Slagus, Jessica McPartland, Craig Nussbaum, Timothy Markika, Corey Dayton, Janine Machio, Zing Penju, Chandri Aurora, De Ming, Arya Edife, Nu Zhu, Heng Lin, Jun Ma, Senesha, Yang Hun Chun. Graduates of the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication. Sharon Goldsmith. Matthew Kligbell. Michael Steinkamp. Han Shao Chang. Graduates of the School of Health Sciences and Human Services. Ahmed Anzalari. Jason Schaefer. Jessica Foos, 
Priscilla Schleel, Rari Una Gimel, Kelly Clemente, Eileen Argentino, Alicia Persad, Emma Gary, Emily Herrera, Nicole Gaetano, Melissa Lazarus, Daniela DeMeo, Naveen Bindra, India Jennings, Christina Parsons, Alia Atwaru, Daniela Popa, Diana Santanello, Joanne Palici, Narisa Prescott, Nicole De Silva, Carly Englander, Lanya Wiggins, Michelle Crown, Shaina Paul Earl, Emily Ryder, Caitlin Rohan, Chaya Lynn, Antoinette Grant, Michelle Keane, Stephanie Miller, Roberta Wright, Oneida Williams, Dana Plinkino, graduates of the School of Engineering and Applied Science, Rima Pitani. Congratulations, graduates. <clears throat> Will the candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor please rise? Mr. President, I have the honor to present those students of the Maurice A. Dean School of Law at Hofstra University who have satisfied all the requirements for the degree of doctor, Juris Doctor. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, I ask that you confer the degree upon these candidates. Graduates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and by the regents of the state of New York, and upon the recommendation of the Dean and the faculty of the School of Law, I'm delighted to confer upon you the degree of Juris Doctor. Congratulations to you. We ask that each of the graduates come to the stage to be introduced by Ron Colombo, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, and then hooded by Grant Hayden, Professor of Law, and Lisa Monticciola, Associate Dean for Students and Administration, and to be recognized by Professor, uh, President Rabinowitz. The graduates of the Maurice A. Dean School of Law. Tiling Yu. Stephen Totter. <laughs> Stephen Stites. <laughs> Justine Delaney. <laughs> Courtney DeChico. <laughs> Megan Fierro Root, Ashley Sauerhoff, Andrew Stoker, Joseph Camerata, Victorio Roman.
Will the School of Education candidates for the degrees Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Education please stand? <laughs> President Rabinowitz, I have the honor now to present to you those students who have satisfied all the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Education in the School of Education and I am pleased to join with the faculty in recommending that you confer the degrees Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Education upon these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and upon the recommendation and by the Regents of the State of New York and upon the recommendation of the Dean and the faculty of the School of Education, I am pleased and proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Education or Doctor of Philosophy as appropriate. Congratulations. I would like to ask Dr. Maureen Murphy and Dr. Alan Singer of the Teaching, Literacy, and Leadership Department and Dr. Joan Zaleski, Professor Emerita of Literacy Studies to assist in the hooding of our doctoral degree recipients. Will the candidates please come forward to be introduced by Dr. Esther Fusco, the Chair of the Department of Teaching, Literacy, and Leadership, and to be recognized by President Rabinowitz and Board of Trustees Chairperson Janice Meyer. Jennifer Pallara. Amy Catalano. Will the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences candidates for the degrees Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Psychology please stand? <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor now to present to you those students who have satisfied all the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Psychology in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and I am pleased to join with the faculty in recommending that you confer the degrees Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Psychology upon these candidates. Graduates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and the Regents of the State of New York, and upon the recommendation of the Dean and Faculty of the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, I am pleased and proud to confer upon you the degrees Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Psychology as appropriate. Congratulations to each of you. Will the candidates please come forward to be introduced? I'd like to ask Dr. Mitchell Scher, Director of the PhD Program in Clinical Psychology, Dr. Robert Mata, Director of the PsyD Program, and Dr. Song Liu, Co-Director of the Applied Organizational PhD Program to assist in the hooding of our doctoral degree recipients. Graduates of Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Dr. Christina Fleck, <laughs> Dr. Vivian Wu.
Dr. Melissa Byrne. Dr. Lauren Ehrlich. Dr. Leah Engel. Dr. Juliana La Rosa Zarens. Dr. Jennifer Schwartz. Dr. Elizabeth Mansdorf. Congratulations, doctors. What about one more round of applause for every single crowd? The H. Allen Robinson Outstanding Doctoral Dissertation Award was established 27 years ago and continues to be awarded annually due to the generosity of the late Professor Emeritus of Reading, Dr. H. Allen Robinson. Dr. Robinson, a nationally recognized authority in reading, was a former chair of the Hofstra University Department of Reading and a former interim dean of the School of Education. The purpose of this award is to encourage and honor a doctoral candidate who has submitted an outstanding dissertation worthy of scholarly and professional recognition. I am pleased to present this year's recipient, Andre Kozakowski, who received his PhD for his dissertation entitled, The Interaction Between Service Quality and Word of Mouth on Service Quality Perceptions satisfaction, loyalty, value, and trust. Congratulations to Andre on a job well done. Please come forward to be congratulated by President Rabinowitz and Provost Berliner. So may I ask all the graduates and the platform party to please rise. Audience, stay where you are. Graduates, that's you now. <laughs> platform party. So you've heard all three speakers today, myself and the senator uh, and Phil, talk about how while the focus is on what you've accomplished today, none of us got here alone. And we would like you now to end this program for us by where it should be, and that is by turning around, let us join with you and giving a round of applause to all the family and friends who supported you to this day. And one final order of business for baccalaureate degree recipients. To make your commencement complete, I ask that you move your tassel 
from right to left to signify your graduation. Now, now, following the commencement, there will be a reception for graduates, guest faculties, and members of the platform party at the David Mack Physical Education Center, which is adjacent to the arena. I ask that the audience remain in place until the academic procession has left. Happy holidays, happy new year, and congratulations. Yeah.